Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to a new episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today we are talking about self-watering pots. Is it even possible to grow orchids in self-watering pots? Well, as you can see, yes, it actually is. And I've been playing around with self-watering pots for years. They really work great for me, but there are a few things you should know about them. There is a learning curve as well. So hopefully today's video will demystify a little bit these pots, which I'm sure many of you are afraid of. And hopefully by the end of the video, you can determine if this could be something useful for you or not. Of course, we are going to repot an orchid in this beautiful self-watering pot, which I have been saving for a special orchid. And speaking of, these pots of course come from Repot Me. They're their new self-watering pots. They have a ceramic version of these as well. This is the plastic one. I prefer this one. I'm gonna tell you during the video why. And I have to say, I absolutely adore them. Like besides the point that this video is sponsored. We're gonna get to that. Besides the fact that Repot Me are my collaborators for the past five years, I love these, I want more. So this video together with this entire series is of course sponsored by repotme.com who offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchid. From potting mixes to pots, fertilizers, accessories and everything in between. And not only for orchids but also for other houseplants as well such as cacti and succulents. So as always I will link you to their website down below in the description. I will also link you my favorite products and also these self-watering pots. So you have everything you need down below in the description and with that said let us start. By the way this video will have a lot of chapters because I'm trying to structure the discussion today as coherent as possible but if you want to skip around some chapters feel free to do so you have everything in the description. Right so first off can orchids be grown in these self-watering pots? The answer, of course, is yes. Now, I know they absolutely do not look like the typical orchid pots and kind of go against the typical information you find for beginners. The information that says orchids should have a lot of ventilation around their roots, orchids should not have wet feet, um, transparent pots are very useful. And while all of those things are partially true, they're not really completely 100% true. So why is that? Well, because they're safe and when you are a beginner, it is so much more helpful to you to use standard, traditional, transparent pots so you can see when the medium dries, so you can see how the roots grow. It's also very beneficial to have extra ventilation because you're not sure how your environment works yet. Maybe you'll discover you don't need that extra ventilation. Maybe you'll discover that you absolutely do. You need more ventilation in the pot than you think. So because we don't necessarily know who we're talking to when we're looking at the camera, we tend to go with the safest options. Transparent pots so you can see the roots and when to water, extra ventilation just in case your environment is a little bit humid, also bark mixes, again just in case your environment doesn't really work out that well with more water retentive media. It's all about safety. Beyond that though, when you get a sense of how orchids work in general and how your environment works, you can go creative. And I went creative all of these years so many times, it's not even funny, <laughs> but one of the very, very preferred ways of growing orchids for people who have dry and hot environments is a self-watering pot. Is it transparent? No. So we cannot see the roots growing. We will have to use our intuition and our knowledge and experience about orchids to determine if the orchid is okay just by looking at the top part, like the leaves and pseudobulbs and make an idea if the bottom part is good as well. Does it have extra ventilation? No, but it doesn't mean that it's not ventilated. This will not create a seal. It's really hard to create void or to create a seal. So there is some ventilation. The medium we're using is still kind of airy and not dense, but indeed there is less potential ventilation in something like this than a traditional pot. But it's not completely not aerated. And also, isn't it a bit too much water? Well, if you live in a cooler or very humid climate, it might be a little too much. But if you live in the desert, it might be just ideal. <laughs> and plus, nobody says that you need to use the reservoir all of the time. You can just use this as a decorative mask and use this as a normal pot and just 
leave water in the reservoir when you need it, maybe in summertime or maybe in winter, depending how you heat your home. So yes, it is absolutely possible to grow orchids in something like this because it's not completely non-ventilated. It's also not very, very wet. It all depends how you keep it and how it interacts with your environment. And there's also no problem that it's opaque. Roots don't really need light, even though they can photosynthesize sometimes, it's not their main job. They're not very good at it, so they don't necessarily need light. And if you know how to tell the health of an orchid and when you need to water without seeing the roots, then it works out. So are there particular types of orchids that do better in self-watering pots or are more prone to do good in self-watering pots? Well, I would say yes. As you might expect, a self-watering pot is used to retain more moisture or to offer moisture for longer in those environments which cannot hold on to moisture. And what orchids need more moisture? Well, things like Oncidiums. This is a Selagene usitana, but most Selagenes do require a little bit more water. Anything that doesn't like to dry out all that much can be a little bit better suited for self-watering pots. And of course, if you have terrestrial orchids, such as dual orchids, they will absolutely do great in something like this. As far as I know, self-watering pots were first used with normal houseplants. If you have an orchid which is terrestrial and you pot it in soil, yeah, it can definitely do good in self-watering pots. But this doesn't mean that other orchids such as cattleyas will not. It just depends on environment. The hotter and drier you go, the more types of orchids you can get away with in a self-watering pot. Personally, with my environment, which is heavily influenced by my climate, I can actually get away with cattleyas and vandas in self-watering pots. I just have to be a little careful in winter and not leave too much water in the reservoir, if at all. But come spring, summer, autumn, oh yes, cattleyas and vandas absolutely love self-watering pots. So if you're thinking of giving self-watering pots a try, I would go for something that loves more moisture or Phalaenopsis. Phalaenopsis, in my opinion, especially the store-bought ones, are so versatile. They can live in very, very humid conditions and they can also tolerate drought. To me, they are a jack of all trades. You want to keep them in high moisture? They will love it. You want to conserve water? Fine. They're just so drought tolerant, they won't care. So either a moisture-loving plant, either Phalaenopsis, I would say it's a good orchid to trial and error a little bit, the self-watering system. So what types of environments are better suited for these pots? We kind of touched base a little bit with this as well, but obviously if your environment is rather humid or cool, something like this might be an overkill and in the worst case scenario might be damaging. But obviously in very dry, very hot environments, this can be a lifesaver. How do you know if your environment is dry or humid or cool or warm? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? But in regards to orchids, that can be a little tricky. So the best way to tell is by thinking about how often you need to water your orchid and what type of medium it is potted in. If you have an orchid potted in bark and you need to water it every more than seven days, I don't think this is for you. I think your environment does not promote water evaporation due to a reason or another. It could be temperature, humidity, maybe other factors as well, air movement. If it takes more than a week for just plain bark to dry for you, this might not be the best for you unless you're dealing with terrestrial orchids, case in which this could work absolutely fine like a normal pot. If in your environment you have an orchid potted in bark and you water it every six to seven days or so by day seven it's completely bone dry this could be good for you but again with those orchids that like moisture like oncidiums even phalaenopsis as they're very versatile you could try trial and error a little bit with a particular mixture we're gonna get to it you could benefit from something like this and then again, if in your environment you have an orchid potted in bark, just bark, and it dries in one to three days, I think this will become your next best friend. Not even kidding. It, I love self watering pots. They save so much time and so much effort. So this is, let's say, a more hands-on way of knowing if your home is rather dry or humid, because I know it can be a little bit misleading. You, you think your home is dry, but actually it's not all that dry because you don't really feel humidity all that much, right? Especially when it's somewhere in the middle. 
but looking at how your orchid dries, that can give you a good indication. A little side note, your orchid should be healthy, not rootless. If it's rootless, it's not gonna absorb anything and my whole analogy will not work. You have to have a regular, normal orchid that grows, that has roots and is doing good. So what potting mixes are suitable for these pots? Is bark a good potting mix? Absolutely not. Bark will not draw the water from below, from the reservoir, all the way up. It will just stay wet here and the top half will be absolutely bone dry and that is not what we want. Self-watering pots, as I was saying, were created for soil and soil-like materials. And we don't really grow orchids in soil unless they're terrestrial. Things like oncidiums and selogenies and cattleyas, they don't grow in soil. So we need a material that is wicking and water retentive. And what material do we know that does that? You guessed it, sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is a very popular orchid medium because it can be prepared to be very fluffy, very airy and very nice to the roots. It has a great pH, but it's also very water retentive and very wicking. Meaning that if there is water anywhere within this pot, it will be absorbed and distributed evenly throughout the moss's mass. That was a bit of a tongue twister. So if we have water in the reservoir, the moss touching that water will absorb it and will direct it all the way to the top. So in our mixtures, if we're not using anything wicking or water retentive, we will not benefit from the system. It will just be like a normal pot with a mask pretty much to catch the water that's it but using a water retentive and water absorbent material will make this work sphagnum moss is the best it can also be used in combinations with bark even with lava rock with leka you can also use lava rock and leka but in my experience depending on environment they might not be wicking enough it really really depends on environment here if you want to keep it safe and enjoy the full benefits of a self-watering pot start with moss mixtures or full moss and then experiment with lava rock and lika if you so desire. So how do we water an orchid in these pots? Well, just like any other orchid, we can go to the sink and run some water through the pot, then put a little water in the reservoir if you want, or not. If it's winter or you just don't want some extra storage of water, just don't put water in the reservoir. Run water through the pot, let it drain, put it back or we can even water with a watering can where the orchid is located and just let it fill the reservoir to whatever level you desire. Make sure you are a little careful with fertilizing. Don't use too much fertilizer because you're gonna have a whole lot of it in the reservoir available for the orchid. Just stick to the instruction of your fertilizer and you should be okay, don't overdo it. Typically, it's not necessary to soak the orchid. If you use sphagnum moss or a very wicking material, it's not necessary to soak. We soak usually orchids in bark because the bark doesn't wick water. It doesn't get wet all that much. So we need to soak it. But sphagnum moss does not need soaking. If you wanna flush the pot, flush the pot. It's just like a normal pot with the addition of a reservoir which you can use if you want or you can skip. And before we go ahead and repot an orchid in this wonderful little pot, just a little update on my orchids. I've potted this Oncidium orchid a few months ago in March. I have it written on the tag. I'll link it to the video down below. It has done amazing. I didn't even have too much shriveling of the pseudobulbs, which happens a lot with oncidiums. And if you remember, this oncidium had a lot of roots that I had to remove, so I didn't leave a whole lot of roots. But because the pot stood moist, the roots that remained always had water at their disposal, so I didn't even get a lot of shriveling. I don't have accordion-shaped leaves. Everything is going great with this oncidium. And then more recently, I potted my Selogeny Usitana, which is this wonderful orchid. I hoped that it will bloom before I filmed this video, but it didn't. But it's okay, we're probably gonna see it at the end of the month. And as you can see, it's doing great. It has three buds at the moment. It is a sequential bloomer and it's a very, very thirsty orchid. I've always struggled keeping this one hydrated, but it's doing absolutely fantastic in this self-watering pot. These two pots are the same as the one I just showed you. They're just different colors. And with that said, Today, I'm going to pot another very thirsty orchid in this pot. So let me prepare my little table. I'll be right back. 
All right, so here I have a Phragmopedium orchid. It is a type of slipper orchid, and Phragmopediums are those types of orchids which should never become dry, the vast majority of them. This one in particular absolutely loves moisture and hates drought, and I've always had issues maintaining it with, with my busy life, so I think a self-watering pot would be ideal for it. And the potting material that I will be using is sphagnum moss. No other type of mixture. Sphagnum moss is ideal in my environment. Now, a little bit of a side note about phragmopediums. You will see some growers be very against sphagnum moss and other growers absolutely loving sphagnum moss and doing great with phragmopediums and moss. And that just goes to show you how environment can make such an incredible difference in potting techniques and potting preferences. And of course, if you know how to use those materials to be in your advantage. So for me, sphagnum moss has proven to be the best material to cope with my environment. Now, one thing that I will try to do is make sure that these cones have sphagnum moss. These cones actually dip into the reservoir, so I'll be sure that inside the pot they are not hollow, they actually have sphagnum moss. If a few strands of moss touch the water, it's enough to direct all of that water up through the entire pot. So I will just make sure the cones have sphagnum moss. I hope you can tell there is sphagnum moss inside the cones. So that's the only thing I want to draw your attention to if you're not using soils, which will fall into those cones. You have to make sure that whatever material you are using goes inside the cones, because if it doesn't, that water will just sit in the reservoir. Right, so I made sure that the moss is in the cones and then I'm just gonna add sphagnum moss inside, very fluffy. You see, I don't press on it. I try to make everything very fluffy, very airy. Sphagnum moss retains a lot of air if you know how to pack it. Let me just get some more sphagnum moss close. I'm gonna arrange my orchid in the middle and then start adding the moss around and in between the roots. Again, I don't really care about the shape of it, how many strands it pulls along. All I care about is making it airy. Especially in a pot without extra ventilation, if you compress the sphagnum moss, it will not be very good. You can actually suffocate the roots with compressed moss. And without those extra ventilation holes to mitigate a little bit the effect of the moss being compressed, it's tricky. You need to be careful. Hence why I don't think these pots are meant for very, very, very early beginners. Spend a year or a little more with a typical setup of a clear pot with slots and with bark chips or a mixture of bark and moss. Learn how your orchid reacts in your environment, what it takes to take care of it in regards to water, how fast it dries, all of those things. Spend some time with those basic stuff and gather a bit of experience and then you can make a better decision if something like this is even useful or needed for your environment. Right, so I added moss almost all the way to the top. These types of orchids do not grow aerial roots. Whatever root starts to grow in the air, it's just gonna dry and not grow. So I made sure that the base of the fans touch the sphagnum moss. And personally, I do like to top dress with bark. This prevents algae and cyanobacteria accumulations, which happen a lot in my environment, Sally, but it doesn't mean that it has to happen in all environments. I personally do like to top dress. So here I have just normal bark. I'm going to place it on the top. This even helps retain that moisture just a little bit longer. It's not gonna perform miracles, but it will help keep in the moisture. Acts a little bit like mulch but it's still very breathable, very airy. The water will evaporate. If you have one of those environments, nothing will, will prevent it from just disappearing within a few days. There we go. Again, I'm not pressing on the pot. I'm just distributing it at the very top. If I would press on this pot, I can compress the moss into a one centimeter layer or half an inch. That's how fluffy it is in here. Because again, I wanted to have air pockets. I just wanted those air pockets to stay humid. 
Alrighty, so now all I have to do is water it and I'm actually going to water it here so I show you. First though, let me clean the table. Alright, so in the first month or month and a half or so, the orchid doesn't really need fertilizer because it's not going to grow very fast. It will spend some time getting adjusted to the potting mix and starting to put out its roots. Sometimes it can take even more if your orchid has been stressed, but mine already has roots. It's perfectly fine, but in the first month, I personally don't like to fertilize. Most likely nothing bad will happen if you offer a little bit of fertilizer. I just don't find it necessary so I just don't use fertilizer, just plain water. And what I'm gonna do is put water on the surface of the pot, so on the medium, not in the crowns, to avoid the risk of rot. So I actually added quite a little bit of water but it's already started to drain. So at this point, being that it's summer, I'm just going to leave this here as it is with the quantity of water that I added and voila, we are done. There's really nothing to it, right? So if you feel like sphagnum moss is maybe a little too much or you don't have the courage to use only moss, you can definitely mix it with perlite, maybe leca, maybe lava rock, sponge rock, whatever you have at hand, even charcoal, bark chips. Mind you though, Depending on the quality you use, you might have the surprise of the sphagnum moss actually deteriorating slower than the bark chips. Personally, I use a very good quality sphagnum moss and a not so good quality bark that I find locally. I don't need to import it, I don't need to spend extra money on it. It's not the best quality bark, but it does the job especially as a top layer. I do have a few setups in which I do mix it with sphagnum moss and I have to say, by the two year mark, the sphagnum moss is still going strong, but the bark is done. So being that this is a high moisture environment, maybe mixing the sphagnum moss with sponge rock or perlite or, you know, bigger sized perlite if you can find, maybe that's better than bark because it will stay wet most of the times and perlite doesn't break down, especially if you're using good quality moss. You can keep an orchid like this for two to three years even, depending on quality again. So replacing the medium too soon is not very economical. I would not use bark, I would go for something inorganic as a mixture. But if you can get away only with sphagnum moss in the pot, that is fantastic because the top layer doesn't degrade so much. It stays dry pretty much most of the times. It only has that bottom layer which is wet. It doesn't lead to degradation all that fast. And if it does degrade, all you need to do is exchange the top layer, not the whole layers in the pot. Anyway, so that is about it for today. Hopefully this video shed some light on the self-watering pots. As I was saying, Repotme also has ceramic pots, which look exactly like this. The only difference is the pot inside doesn't really have cones. It is a porous clay material. In time, those pores can get clogged with salts, build up from fertilizers or even from the tap water. And I did have many viewers tell me that those types of pots, whether are Repot Me or other brands, they tend to clog up and not wick the water. The fix is to add a wick. So you can actually use those pots as well. And I have a video on how to fix the non-wicking issue. But if you prefer the plastic ones, these ones have the cones, so you don't have to drill anything. Just know, that the clay ones, as beautiful as they are, they might need a little bit of tweaking in the future. Alrighty, so with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new about self-watering pots. If you're using self-watering pots with your orchids, let me know in the comments. How is it working for you? What orchids you grow in self-watering pots and what materials you use? Right, so with that said, thank you Repodme for sponsoring yet another video and thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.